uh, Ian Burrell, who runs Rumfest, or is the global rum ambassador, and also runs Rumfest UK, which is absolutely fantastic and held in October this year. In uh, yeah. <clears throat> Um, and it is a fantastic time to go and experience loads of different rums. So, Ian, welcome. And also, one of my favorite human beings in the whole world, Mr. Richard Seal, who I love dearly and who I, this is a surprise for Richard tonight that I have not been drinking before I speak to him, because normally I phone him Barbados, well, our time, two o'clock in the morning, um, and harass him about various things. But Richard is definitely one of the best distillers in the world. Um, especially of rum, and we work very closely with him, and I'm a massive, massive fan of everything he does. So I'm going to hand over to Ian. Um, if you want to ask questions, please do the raise your hand thing, um, and we'll be happy to take any questions or any comments as we go along. Um, and enjoy the session. I have my rums. I hope everyone else has theirs. Hey, <laughs> I hope everyone's got their rums because uh, the good thing about doing a, a, a tasting on on, some, on, a, on on a platform like the Whiskey Exchange is you, you get to order little kits like this. Here we go. Oh, let me do a little close up. Little kits like that where you can get your little samples of a of a selection of rums from one particular uh, company or blender or distiller. Fortunately, we have um, all of the rums from one of my favorite distillers and distilleries in the world. Um, unfortunately, the master distiller is actually here with us on this uh, call, so, uh, <laughs> so he's gonna hear all of the compliments. His head's gonna get too big, and he probably won't be able to leave the screen, but most of it's just um, as such. So I wanna give a big welcome to the, uh, the award-winning uh, Mr. Richard Seal. Woo Richard, hello. <laughs> and he's smiling, which is a bonus. He's smiling, but well, we can't hear him. <laughs> Richard, you will. say hello to everyone. <laughs> hello, every hello to everyone. Richard's dressed up for the occasion, I hope everyone notices. Uh, that's very true, that's very true. But yeah, what we thought we'd do is one of the reasons why we wanted to do something like this is because a, a lot of people from my time in this, in this industry, I've been in this industry for probably about 30 years now, and, uh, and it's very rare you actually get to hear about a product from the horse's mouth um, as such. And I've been involved and been uh, at many, many tastings um, but it's normally done with either a brand ambassador, it's normally done with a, a rum aficionado as such, but very rarely do you actually do a tasting with the person that created the product. So this is a great opportunity. I have to thank uh, COVID-19 for creating this opportunity for us <laughs> because we'll all be around doing something uh, this, time of, this time of night as opposed to capturing Richard who's in Barbados at the moment. Nice and sunny out there, although we can get drinks and you guys can't at the moment, but that's another story. Um, or oh, Dean. Richard. Richard does have a distillery. Can you not get some yeah, alcohol yeah. there? He's not, to, he's not allowed to. Well, uh, allegedly, I've heard they that banned the, the sale here locally. That's it. They All over the locally. world, the only places that have banned rum are in this part of the world in Caricom. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why. And it's, I it's, it's a historical thing. They don't get it. It's the health department here, but they don't get it. It's the rum is seen as. Um, Let's just say it's still seen as kill devil. It's still the, in other words, in times of public health emergency, mm. the prohibitionists come to the fore, they jump on their opportunity, and no one has the courage to stand up. Because if you do, you are then treated as some kind of drunken pariah. So <laughs> in come the, 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 the Prohibitionists, which are always a combination combination from various forces, uh, just as it was back in the prohibition of the 30s. It was multiple, uh, the temperance movement was multiple entities. So they come forward, they, they say, right, public health, we got to ban it. And all the ministers are just completely, um, don't, you know, they don't have the pride in what we do and they just shamelessly keep quiet because you know i don't open my mouth and defend rum because then they might think i'm a i'm a drunkard are you not richard i am a part of the i'm a connoisseur <laughs> so so wait a minute do you reckon so in barbados where they've stopped actually um selling or selling up and, and of course in some distilleries the making of rum do you reckon something like this could work where we could have samplers that we send to people's houses and and we can have a little online party there like we're doing now well in in the in this in this sort of rushed 
um, emergency order. It just says no sale. So presumably, okay. presumably you could um, you could you could you can donate or, or share Ooh. with friends or whatever. Okay. But, mm. I'm just looking at loopholes. But, I know um, I, I know I'm currently not not testing the legislation anyway. But um, yeah, no, it, it's a it's a pretty poor reflection of the situation in the Caribbean in the cultural image of rum by the powers that be. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a shame. It's a real shame. The, the, the same ministers will, will, will happily, you know, drink junk in whiskey before rum because, uh, you know, that's, that's the image. And, and you, and you know it well, Ian, as well. I, I as well. Do. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> You know, you 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 have it. Um, you know, over in in Europe, you speak about we don't drink what our fathers drunk. While in the Caribbean, we don't drink. We drink what our fathers couldn't afford. Um, it's yeah. got nothing to do with with um, we don't drink what our fathers drink. It's all yeah. about uh, aspiration. It's all about. Um, you know, the lowest, lowest, low end whiskey. I'm not going to call any names because I'm on the whiskey exchange. It's true. You're on the whiskey exchange. It's very yeah. sad to watch and somebody uh, drink an absolute junk product um, before rum, but they yeah. do it because they feel that is, um, you know, that makes them perceived as having, uh, um, you know, prestige in their power. Prestige, yes. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. I, mean, I know that leads on to another spirit category, but I won't go into that. But speaking of that. Well, actually, I can mention that because actually, Bob, it's not a big whiskey market. And actually, yes, when people go on to drink the imported <laughs> spirits, I have actually observed people drinking absolute vanilla and, and, and talking about how smooth <laughs> it is because, you know, it's, yeah, it's very sad. Uh, well, this actually, this actually. Probably talk about Veritas, no? Yeah, as I was yes, saying, this actually talk leads, about on, leads on to a range, of, a range of rooms you want to get into. Man in Barbados, please. <laughs> so the, uh, hope for some of the guys out there um, that actually have got the samples. If you haven't got the samples, you might have, like I have, a, a whole bottle actually waiting for you. If you do have the Veritas, please open up and have a sip. But um, it's one of those, as a, as a bartender, as a rum lover, as a, I know the media call us mixologists, but I like, I like to call us cocktologists. Um, as a bartender, um, what, what's so funny? As a bartender, products like this, the Veritas, make me want to start break dancing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this rum, Rich? Why did you create a product? And more importantly, why did you go to the homeland to get the base of this product, Jamaica, um, in this mix? Well, okay, I'll try and give the more reasonable length version of the story but um yeah, remember we got six rums to try <laughs> yeah exactly uh um but this was largely born out of um the so luca and i made a joint visit to hamden back in is, uh i think june of 2016. And this uh, is Luca Gagano, in case people yes. don't know who he is. He's the owner of Velier, one of the biggest dependent bottlers uh, in, in the world. <laughs> yeah, um, and so <laughs> that whole thing was part of Luca's whole mission to develop the lines that he's developed, the pure single rounds, etc., etc. And um, uh, so we went jointly there to Hampton and and of course, everyone's seen the marvelous development of that relationship since then. But one of the ideas we had at that um, well, that sort of wonderful lost weekend away, the, it was it was Luca, myself, um, Gail, uh, but and the whole Hussey family, the owners of um, of Hamden. We stayed at the Great House, mm. uh, and it was a, a weekend of of many great ideas. And one of them was very tasked. And, and so the mission was a couple of objectives there. Um, as you know, white rum is a thing, is a legit thing in, the, in, the, in our part of the world, uh, I was Jamaica. It's when you get in things like gold and dark, we never use those terminology historically, but we always, there was always white rum. And for us, a little bit, the tragedy of the, the white rum market is, um, that it's so dominated by flavorless white rums. Mm. 
And then the really exceptional white rums are very, um, they're very niche. They're rare. They're hard to get. You know, I'm talking about the Clarins and the Agricoles yeah. and all these wonderful, and Jamaica, I mean, the, the you know, the, 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 you know, the, where the, you know, rum bar and, 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 and rum fire and all these uh, very specialist white rums. Mm. And so we wanted to, we, one of the things that we do, as you know, with the, with the Dorley's three is we try to, what we try to do there is to kind of create the white rum that was sort of the cocktail revolution of sort of the post prohibition era. And that was the aged white rum. Okay, um, okay. So a light white rum, but aged. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so very, very palatable and, and, and became, you know, massively popular in cocktails. One of the things I get on this rum. Mm -hmm. But Luca wanted to do something with, with, he wanted to do something with unaged white rum. In other words, kind of a little bit more like what was in the Caribbean. Right. Okay, and, yeah, yeah. um, that was the the so one of the missions was was to come out with a white rum that was you know uh very very flavorful mm. uh but young uh, the dominant notes being uh, immature notes uh okay. the other motivation out there as well was is that one of the things of course as everyone knows is that there is um there is um you know it's very common for multiple origins to be blended in europe Okay. Uh, rum is shipped over to Europe and then uh, European uh, blends are created uh, and we thought it what a novel idea would be that not only will we create this, this uh, white rum mm. meeting that flavor profile but why don't we do one of these multiple country blends but instead exactly. of it being done by Europe it would be done by us yeah. so it was some in other words something I, I can't think of any any uh, any case of it ever being done in the past where the two distillers mm. uh, blend it and bottle it in the Caribbean. So we wanted to do that because, as you know, we are very keen on pushing all of rum making back to the Caribbean, as in all of the aging, all of the the bottling, because, I mean, the Caribbean is in the least economic position of anyone to lose any part of the value generated by their brand. <clears throat> and so we will, would achieve doing a multiple origin back yeah. home. Okay. So and, we'll, we'll, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut, stop you there, Rich, because, uh, <laughs> but one of, the, one, of the, one of the things that a lot of people, especially here in the UK, always say is that white rums are just made for, just made for, for mixing. Um, right, so yes. Would you, when you created this particular rum, um, if people get the, I mean, if you smell and taste the rum, I get a lot of, I get a little tiny bit of that Jamaica funkiness because I think that's just a great structure and the backbone of the actual product, but it's still light enough to actually work in particular cocktails. Would you say this is a cocktail rum or could you give this a, is this just a sipping rum of a, of a lighter proportion? Well, I, I can tell you that when Luca and I did it, I would do the blends, shoot across Luca. None, neither of us ever tried it in a cocktail. Right, okay. okay. So, whereas every other white rum, I'm sure when it was created, is probably tested and tested and tested and tested. Right, and right, right, yeah. Luke okay. and I never tested it in a single cocktail. I can, mm, I can mm. tell you that um, 100%. Well, we I'm created trying, a rum I'm, that I'm trying, we like. these cocktails, they're terrible. <laughs> yeah, cocktails. well, exactly. We would have been terrible. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Total waste of time testing with us. Right? That's why he has other people do that for him. <laughs> um, so we never did. We created a rum that we liked. And, and yes, I get a lot of people who will say to me, but I can drink very, and they'll say something like, I know I'm not supposed to, but I can drink yeah. very tasty on its own. It's, it's and very I, true. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why I, I don't believe in the term sipping rums, because I think no, any well, rum could be sipped. No, I feel about that term. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sipping the Veritas and I'm enjoying it. It's, it's a product that, yes, I know it's going to be the base of a great daiquiri, two parts of the Veritas, one part fresh lime juice, half part like a simple syrup, give it a good hard shake served up. For me, that's going to be, I can't even say the word it's going to be because there might be some under 18s tuning into this that they shouldn't be, but it's an amazing flavor profile. Well, I mean, um, always remember that the drinks came afterwards. Yeah, yeah, the rum, that's very so, true. Very true. So the drinks came after. You should always create the rum first and yeah. leave, the, leave the, the bar guys to work yeah. out how, how it's best done. Now, and we, have a, we have someone called Meredith who's actually said, um, 
Um, I haven't got the Veritas, but I've got this rum called uh, Propitas. Is that any good? <laughs> so, yes, considering that we probably have an American audience as well, yeah, we should make that clear that Veritas and Propitas are the same rums with different names. Right. Veritas okay. for Europe and Propitas for North America. Um, yeah, no, people, people sometimes say that I'm not supposed to. And I, and I say, well, no, you are supposed to, um, you know, we make a rum as a rum and then, you know, what the guys do behind the bar with it, it's, it's their business. We are not surprised, of course, that they like it and they like it in, in historical drinks that used white rum. Um, we expected that. And, um, you know, one of the things I would just sort of emphasize compared to some of the white rums, the whole idea really was to give you a very flavorful white rum, mm. but to give you the sort of flexibility as well, that, which is why those very flavorless white rums are, are dominant. Yeah. You know, they're dominant for two reasons. Well, one, let's face it, they're cheap, but two, they're also dominant because they're flexible. Yeah. Um, you know, they're easy to use. And so what we wanted to do with Veritas is to kind of win you over with something that you found to be really, really flavorful, but you also okay. found it was very easy to use. Cool. Speaking of easy to use, I've just um, poured out my little tiny sample of a Dorley's 5. And uh, for me, Dorley's, Dorley's is one of those rums that <clears throat> I can honestly say it's probably one of the most underappreciated brands that I've ever seen uh, on the rum planet. And, and and a lot of the reasons why is because some people just don't appreciate rum. That's one reason. And the second reason is some of your other rums that we're going to get onto later, a little bit later, the exceptional cast and some of the value brands are so dominant. We forget how we forget how good and what the quality is of Dorley's. Can we talk a little bit about the Dorley's Five? Because that's the next one in our little sample. Well, Dorley's Five is actually the oldest Dorley's um, that's currently around. I mean, there were older Dorley's releases that are that are, that are gone. And to your point, that's very much what's tended to happen is, is uh, this is just sort of practical economics, is that rums like Dodie's Five, or you know very well at home, Old Brigand, these yeah, are kind of mainstream, <laughs> these are mainstream Barbados rums. But when we come to, the, to, to Europe or the UK, we're not operating in the mainstream anymore, or at least to operate in the mainstream will be, you know, way, you know, impossible for us. So what tends to happen? We tend to either be in the, the, the cocktail environment mm. or the very, very high end. So you're right. What happens is, is rums like Dorley's Five will, will fly on the radar. Mm. But the Dorley's Five is a much more representative of what your, you know, typical Barbadian is drinking. Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, I get, I, I, one of the questions I wanted to always ask you is, uh, do you have like a, a signature, a, a common trait that goes through your rums? Because I get this, I get this like buttered sawdust note when I'm smelling and tasting your rums. And I'm like, oh, that's definitely a four square rum. And I get a lot of that in, in the Dorley's Five. And it's, it is yeah, like well, just I mean, sawdust and some cream. One of, the, one of the key sort of um, philosophical sort of uh, approaches that I have is, you know, it's very easy people think some, some of the things that people think are easy are hard and some of the things that are hard are, are very easy. Yeah. And one of the things that's very, very easy is just to make things taste different for the sake of making them taste different. Yeah. Yeah. And then just you know, and saying, well, we, you know, we made the rum completely different. Look what great innovators we are when you're just, well, that's just, you know, you could wake up tomorrow and make the rum in a different way. Hmm. The key thing is to make rums, uh, to keep pushing the envelope. So you want to bang out the Dorley's Five for the, as they say, the everyday drinker who, who loves mm. his Dorley's Five. Yeah. But, you know, when we push out a nobility or a Plenty Potensario or, or all these rums, yeah, we're trying to push the envelope. But we also want you to say, that's Foursquare. That's okay. Barbados. <clears throat> okay. That and if you don't say those things, um, then then we failed really i mean that's that's what we, we need to do i'm mean, obviously when we do something like very task well that's a blend of both so in in a way i mean that's slightly different we want you to be confused with that yeah. one yeah. we want you to be going hang on a minute is this jamaican hang on is this bobby and i'm confused that mission accomplished there with that but no when we, whether you pick up that dolly's five mm. 
or you try Plenty Potentario. I know, I'm going to try and say that. <laughs> we want you to see, <laughs> we want you to see the signature, yeah? And yeah. Peter, yeah. is that your sense of terroir? I mean, because I, I always struggle with the notion of terroir and spirits um, as a wine person. Um, and is that your idea? Like the, so yeah, I mean, I'm always careful with that word because of course it has different meanings to different people. And I think yeah. terroir should be used um, probably more, or it's more correctly used where the links to the region are so strong that they define the flavor. Um, in our case, the style of Barbados rum has been as defined as much of the area as a culture. And in many cases, I would say more the culture. So, you know, the reason, you know, if you go back 200 years, you probably would not find a bigger difference between a Jamaica rum or a Barbados rum. Right, yeah. But today you find a major difference. And that influence is not, um, it's not just an environment that is cultural. Yeah. There is a yeah. huge cultural mm. element of that. Mm. Um, yeah. At least that's my feeling. Which is so awesome. I'm always cautious with the word, but yes, I do think, for example, there is a Barbados style. I do think there is a four square style. And that doesn't mean it can't evolve. So yeah. that doesn't yeah. mean that in a hundred years from time, you, you, you have a natural slow drift. So in a hundred years time, somebody might be saying, oh yeah, this is distinctly Barbados rum, but it may taste very different from today's rum. Yeah. yeah. But I certainly don't want to make a rum tomorrow that someone says to me, well, hang on a minute, this doesn't remotely taste like a Barbados rum. I think that would be a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, it, for me, that would be a travesty, especially as I'm always talking about um, where a rum is made and the country of origin. And, 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 it's, and it's the same rum. thing for, you know, my Jamaica friends. I mean, can you imagine a travesty? Someone makes a Jamaica rum and then someone says to you, oh, well, that doesn't taste like a Jamaica rum to me. That'd be horrible. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of good rums, I'm just moving on. See, I'm just, I'm, I've finished the other two already. I'm actually gone from the five and I've moved now to uh, your 10-year-old, RL Seals 10-year-old. And uh, I think I, I remember when I first tried this rum, I was like, what a narcissist. He's put his name on the bottle of <laughs> rum. Tell us a little bit about the RL Seals 10-year-old and, and maybe some of the differences between, say, the Dawley's brand and the RL Seals. Right. Well, that, right. That does give me a good, good um, opportunity to explain why mm. you've got rums named Foursquare, RL Seal, and Martin Dorley all from us. Yeah, why? And, why? And, and it's actually, it's actually uh, not hard to explain in the context of um, uh, the whiskey guys, because it's something they understand, I think, well, I hope they do. Oh. The separation of distiller and blender. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, we had the same separation in Jamaica. We had the same separation in Barbados. So today, that's all blurred in whiskey, um, and it's getting blurred in rum. But, you know, all the famous whiskey blended brands were originally independent of distillers. Um, they bought from distillers and blended. And that was the same thing in Barbados and Jamaica. In Barbados, um, people like my great-grandfather, R.L. Seal, uh, were independent of any distillery. Martin Dorley, uh, John D. Taylor. Uh, these are names of, that survived. There are many over in Jamaica. Um, we know today J. Ray and Nephew, yep. uh, Daniel Finzi, Fred yep. Myers, Fred Myers, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Edwin Charlie, Edwin Charlie. Uh, Edwin Charlie. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so the same, uh, the same separation. And what's happening today is uh, well, we're a little bit behind whiskey in the sense that we now have distillery brands. So J. Ray bought. Appleton, I think in 1917. Yeah, I think yeah. eventually there was an Appleton brand about the 1940s. 1950s. Yes, correct, correct. Uh, and so, daggers. of course, we've seen in the whiskey world the creation of distillery brands, Glenfiddich, notably first in 64. Yeah. And now you have the Hamden brand and the Worthy Park brand mm -hmm. and the Foursquare brand. So you're seeing a blur because the distilleries now have their brands. And the, the formerly independent names are now linked to particular distilleries. So obviously right. Foursquare. So just like in Scotch whiskey, it's all blurred, but that's the heritage. So that's why, um, you know, we are El Seal, our original name, because hmm. over the years we acquired 
many of that. I mean, you know, there were dozens and dozens of these brands uh, back in the day and consolidation, business closure, um, but we acquired and kept brands going. So as you know, today we don't sell them all export, but back mm -hmm. home we sell, uh, well, Old Brigham was an Alleyne Arthur brand. It was another yeah. uh, original blender. We still yeah. also sell Alleyne Arthur's rum. We still sell ESA Field, which is the, the big dominant one in Barbados. That's the biggest selling uh, brand in Barbados, isn't it? The ESA Field. Uh, yeah. 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 And, um, and then John D. Taylor didn't, rum did not survive, but the, the Falernum brand did. Right. Okay. So okay. yeah, that's how, yeah. So that's how our LCL got on the name. So again, the, 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 the key thing with both Dolly's five and our LCL 10 is you've seen very, very classical Barbies blends. As they say, you know, when I've come out with things like Dolly's 12 or 14, obviously I've tried to push the envelope a little bit, <laughs> but when you're looking at rums like Dolly's five and our LCL 10, you're tasting rums that have sort of tasted that way for decades. Right. Okay. So we've. Uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, Ian, can I interrupt yes. you for a second? I've yeah, got a quick sure, question go off of Facebook. Yeah. Um, Dan Hall's uh, just asked, uh, what would you say was a the fundamental characteristics of Barbados rum? Good we talked about what Dan. they are, but we haven't actually said what they are. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's a million yeah. dollar question. <laughs> because I, I I always find that difficult to do, and different different people say different things, like with Ian. But for me, the it, it's probably the most important quality is to be w very well balanced rums. Balance, balance. Uh, you know, different rums will be more aggressive in certain areas. Yeah. Uh, Barbados rums tend to be very, very balanced style of rums. Um, they have and balance not the balance of flavors is also reflecting again the good balance between distillate and wood. So um, Barbados has always had, you know, a uh, good age rum category, a respect for aging, Dolly's five. So there's always good uh, uh, flavors coming from the wood uh, balance with the distillate. So it's not one or, you know, it's not uh, one or the other. So um, four squares tended to, do, uh, as they say, work along those lines. And, you know, probably if I had to say, well, you know, what's our sort of, uh, um, signature flits, signature type flavors. You know, when you think of the Jamaicans, you think of different fruits. When you think of Barbados, I think of more vanilla, coconut. Yeah. Um, uh, and my so, and my sawdust. My crazy. Yeah. Well, that that's yeah. Well, that's kind of like a vanilla. <laughs> that's like the, the lactones. Uh, the, you know, um, coming out giving those flavors. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that's it really. Um, um, as I say, the different rums do push different emphasis. Obviously, Herod Hereditas, which we'll taste later, has got an influence from the sherry cask. Uh, so, you know, the, the key really, as I say, is to kind of push the push it out, uh, push in different directions, but still maintain some of that signature element. And well, as I say, it's probably evolved a little bit because don't forget, 50 years ago, we probably didn't have as much bourbon cask as we do now. Um, so that tended to sort of push it to us more sort of that vanilla dominant than maybe we were 50 years ago. And 50 uh, years ago, most of the casks would have been what, Madeira casks? Wine no, casks the, some cask, sort of the typical cask that we imported for decades and decades uh, was Canadian oak. Canadian uh, oak, okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Makes sense. And then, and then as is the culture in Barbados reused, hmm. which again is something much more familiar to, to Scotch whiskey guys. Right. Um, right. This, this is the thing to, to grasp when we talk about refill barrels. Um, it's again, this is where culture comes in. So, you know, Barbados, we don't have much trees. Hmm. Scotland, you don't have much trees. So what do you do? You recycle barrels. You go to Kentucky and everyone talks about new wood. Why? Because there's lots of trees. You go to, you go to Cognac and new wood is a big part of the program. Why? Because there's trees. Hmm. Us, tree, poor countries like Scotland and Barbados and Jamaica, well, didn't really have suitable trees. Mm. What do we do? We use refill. We refill. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. it's probably Scotland's very famous um, coolness <laughs> as well. But. Yeah, and if anyone's ever been to Barbados, they know how. But, but that's what happened. <laughs> so, so our history, as they say, is, it's, it's very much a refill history. But to the extent we brought wood in, it was Canadian oak. And in modern times, um, the bourbon American oak. Excellent. Well, I've just, started, I've just poured 
the um, um, well, the first one of our, well, I say, like the big boy and big girl rums, um, and there's the Sagacity, or as I call it, Sega City. Um, tell us a little bit about Sagacity. Um, sorry, what, uh, Ian, I interrupt you again. Oh, yeah, yes, sorry. Yeah. sorry. sorry. Oh, uh, oh, just got a question you. from um, uh, Paulina, who's uh, on the, the little Zoom call, and she's oh, um, Zoom call. Okay. Oh, uh, she's asked, um, uh, how do you choose the names, like Hereditas? Saga City or Sagacity, or if you want to call Sagacity. it, and all the others. How, how do you choose the names? <laughs> um, well, the names, the names. Uh, sometimes the rum inspires the name. Sometimes the name inspires the rum. Uh, the obvious candidates would be something like Triptych, was a blend of three different rums. One of the most underrated rums cast, out there. But, Triptych. Very so underrated. doing that three rum, three cast. Um, uh, you know. So Triptych was kind of the obvious name. Um, Hereditas and Destino were both mean sort of um, uh, inheritance. Uh, and so they were both meant to, to sorry, patrim not Destino, Patrimonio and Hereditas, mm -hmm. both meant inherit inheritance. And they were both 14 year old rums. So mm -hmm. they were the first, um, 14 year old rums we were we were releasing and so the the or sorry i shouldn't say they were first but there were two 14 years really and that was the oldest we we had done and so the idea was um what inspired me there was is that it would have been impossible for me to do 14 year old rums unless mm. i had a, a, a an inheritance or a head start or yeah, something yeah. handed to yeah. me so I decided, so one rum was for Luca and one was for Sekinda. Mm -hmm. And the ability to do two 14 year old rums, I wanted to, as I say, celebrate uh, the inheritance. And so mm -hmm. that's why one was called Patrimonio and one was called um, Hereditas. And they actually have slightly different meanings of inheritance. So Patrimonio is like a, like a gift of inheritance. Yeah. yeah. And Hereditas is like a burden of inheritance. Mm -hmm. In other words, the hereditas is saying i have the burden of inheriting the heritage and provenance of barbados rum and i have to live up to it so you i have the burden of working with sakinda is that what you're saying <laughs> uh, more dawn i would say but anyway um so they they have slightly slightly different meanings of yeah. uh of uh inheritance um so, so that's so is it yeah different rums that uh the can that's where the names but yes um so i come up with the name yeah. I go in names, but sometimes I'll give you another example. Plenty, uh, Plenty Potenciario is named that way because of the um, very foot body style of the rooms yeah. that are in it. So, but just to show you how the names can be inspired, sometimes in previous conversation with Luca, um, sometimes I can't remember the exact conversations, but sometimes the English word Plenty Potentiary would come up. So Luca is very, very familiar with the English word Plenty Potentiary. And um so and i and and so when i was thinking of this rum uh when i wanted to name it um i knew luca would be intrigued by the by that name because he, he certainly he didn't have not he did not have to google it he's very familiar <laughs> with the word um so 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 sometimes that's what can happen you know we can have a word in conversation or something yeah. and um and then I, I i will i will put that word neatly away for the for the future yeah, I, I've come up with a really good word, but I won't, I won't disclose what it is, but I even got your thumbs of approval for it. So we'll keep that for another blend. Uh, maybe one I might get involved with. Is that, is that, is that the one anyone. where we have for the project coming up? Oh, no, that's another project. Okay. <laughs> that's another secret project. Yes, um, there, <laughs> right. There is, a, there, is a, there is a name for that was, uh, there is one that is inspired but from Ian. Oh, cheers. Won't Thank say you. it yet. We won't say it yet. Anyway, back, back to Sega City, because <laughs> that's what I'm oh, drinking. Ian, sorry, uh, before, we, before we jump onto Sega City, I've got one more question uh, from Facebook from Jamie Brown. Uh, he asks, uh, does Foursquare export any casks to the Scotch whiskey industry? Oh, they're greedy, the Scotch people. Why do they want more casks? Um, we have, but it's not something that we routine, routine, routinely do. Um, we've, we've had many, many requests in which we've had to say no. Um, refill casts are a very, very important part of our, our program. We also recharge. So we, we basically generally do not have casts available. Um, 
but we did do some many, many years ago with a with an exchange program where they send us some cash, we put some rum in it, and then we send them back. Um, don't ask me who it was too many years ago, but um, <laughs> we do get we do get requests uh, to purchase cash, which we do on which we unfortunately have to say no because we don't want to we don't want to give them up. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Any any more questions, Billy? Before I go into the next rum. Before I drink them all, or should we save? Uh, I think you're uh, you're safe for now, Ian. So I'm safe off now. Next I'm safe now. So quick, quick little, quick little summary on uh, sagacity. Um, cast, what type of cast? Yeah. So sagacity, oh, right? So so if you haven't figured it out, the there's a little bit of um uh between the colors. There's a there's there's some information in the colors. So in the ECS series, no, mm. sorry, the color of the label. Um, oh, I was looking at the color of the Sorry. So you'll see sagacity is written in red. So the red series, One which was for you, Richard. Oh, so the, there you go. Well, the red you. series uh, is uh, port cast, zin, um, premise, uh, sagacity, and these rums are the more sort of accessible ones, as in they're not oh. castering. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So originally, port uh, port cast was uh, forty. Um, because at that time it was it was uh, difficult to 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 do higher, um, and then uh, Zin was forty three, Premises forty six, one of the best rums out there. Forty eight, and we're gonna we're gonna continue at more than likely continue at forty eight, because forty eight's kind of really the lowest that I will brave. Uh, mm. No chill filtration, no yeah. color. Mm. Um, so 48 is, you know, you're still adding the chunk of water in, which is normally basically a disaster unless you fix it with chill filtration and caramel, which is, I don't want to even get in that discussion of caramel, but if, if, if we all sold cast strength spirits, no one would ever have a conversation about caramel. Um, so, so let's make a movement to selling only cast strength spirits. Then we solve, we solve that caramel problem in one stroke. So 48 is, a uh, is 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 really you know where I prefer not to go below in terms and and not have to resort to those uh, techniques which no distiller actually wants to do, but when you're when you're forced to sell something watered down to forty percent, you it creates a lot of technical problems, and that's only really with complex spirits with pot still spirits with you know in other words if I make you know vodka at forty percent didn't give don't give a shit whether it's chilled filtered or not. <laughs> So yeah, well, you might want um, to filter it twenty seven times. There, but so so the red series is there, but the idea is is that we want with the ECS to have rums that um you know they're not all cast strength. The Velier is gonna be all cast strength, the ECS are not gonna be all cast strength. Yeah. Because yeah. not yeah. everyone wants a cast strength rum. And one of the things I've try I'm trying to do with sagacity as a because one of the things that we did with premise, which I which was not by design, but it came out with other rums and people tended to compare them. And we don't, we didn't necessarily want, you know, cause they're different rums. So we didn't necessarily want the hardcore cash strength guy to say, well, I don't, you know, I compared with premise and I didn't like premise because he's a hardcore cash strength guy. So what we're trying to do with sagacity is we released it on its own and it's a kind of a crossover rum in the sense that we wanted it to appeal the people who don't want cast string rums, but they want to, you know, something different than what's on the shelf. Uh, but I wanted to impress all the cast string guys as well. Right, right. that makes sense. And, okay. and I've been getting great feedback on that. Would you so say the Azure rum itself, 12 years old, it's a blend of rums that were aged either uh, 12 years in ex Bourbon uh, or 12 years in ex Madeira. Um, there is one little um, caveat to that, which I haven't really talked about a lot, is there is also some new wood in the blend as well. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't mm -hmm. spend 12 years in new wood. Yeah. Yeah. They, it spent part of the 12 years in new wood and then it went to ex -Bourbon. Just that little bit of accelerated. Yeah. Like, we have these small because... back labels and it's very hard to fit everything in and some, and, and it, you know, it's a funny thing about this this sort of game and, and talking about things like transparency. Sometimes you you want to write something on a on a label and you know if you write it, it's gonna cause it's gonna be misleading. 
And oh, I'll give you like I'll give, statements. No, I'm talking about when you write a description. So, for example, oh, okay. <laughs> when I did Dorley's 12 years old, mm. it used Madeira cast in the blend. Yeah. So you'll not find that on the label. Mm. And some people say, well, you're not being very transparent. Why didn't you write that? And I said, if I write that word Madeira, mm. every single writer will write finished in Madeira cast. Correct. Yeah. 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 And it is not finished in Madeira cast. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Very true. So you have to be so careful about what you write um, and how it's done. And so, you know, there's no point being transparent if transparency means misleading. <laughs> <laughs> let's move swiftly on before we go down to another little rabbit hole we'll save that for another conversation <laughs> so um our last in fact the last two rums that we have inside our box are both 14 year olds um so i've got in my hands i've got the dolly's 14 so as you know yes. Dolly's one of my favorite brands and we also have the paradise which is uh, i know it's what's going on part of the whiskey exchange exclusivity can you tell us about these two 14 year olds what makes them different what makes them similar um, why I can't get these in my local store. Yeah, are we so, not the store, Ian? Yeah, you probably are, you probably are. <laughs> so originally Dorley's, Dorley's was um, just Bourbon cast, the classic mm -hmm. Dorley's five. As I say, in Dorley's heritage, there are uh, other different rums. Uh, and when we acquired the Dorley's brand in the 90s, they were still bottling two different SKUs, but we dropped one and kept the Dorley's five. It was a more prestigious one. Mm. And then subsequent to that, I added the Dorley's XO and I used uh, Sherry Cast for that. And why did I use Sherry Cast for that? Again, it's the same history as Scotch Whiskey. We would import Sherry Cast and reuse them. And I wanted to bring that back. And so the natural successor to that was to do the Dorley's 12 and of course to do it with Madeira cask, which I actually prefer the Sherry cask. It really is okay. my favorite cask. And again, actually has more of a heritage to Barbados than Sherry. Um, mm, yes. Sherry obviously has a huge heritage of a Sherry cask in Scotland. Well, if you go back far enough, um, the New World used to drink copious amounts of Madeira. Yeah. Um, yeah. both America in, in, in Barbados and American colonies, for example. Um, and it was because the English ships would stop in Madeira. It was Portuguese, so it was a friendly port, and they'd pick up the Madeira. And, you know, I have, uh, I posted on my Facebook um, an, an, a newspaper ad, um, you know, Bridgetown newspaper from, you know, the early 1800s. And, you know, there's a couple of people advertising the, the wine and spirits, you know, traders. And Madeira is the headline. So, you know, it's like, you know, new Madeira casts arrive and then, you know, underneath sort of says, you know, we also have, you know, rum and whiskey and brandy or whatever, but Madeira is, is the king. And a lot of people don't realize it was the phylloxera that also destroyed it um, uh, in an, basically in the new world. And, and so anyhow, so, so that's why I love to do the Madeira cast. And so I did the Dorley's 12. But one of the things I did with the Dorley's um, was... I did them at 40% mm. and why, and now Barbados is 43. And again, we can go into the history of why that is. Um, but when we came to, to England, you know, the taxes are very, very high. And, you know, we were, you know, we were told, you know, you really should do 37 and a half because, you know, rum's cheap and, and um, you know, you've got to be competitive. And so we thought we were very big and bold and prestigious doing 40%. Um, as you know, rum has made wonderful progress in the last couple of years. Yeah. So when I did Dolly's 14, I decided that I was not going to do it at any commercial strength at all. Oh, wow. It was okay. done at my strength, which mm. is, as I said to you, 48 is as low as I dare go. Um, and so we did it at 48. And the other oh. thing, of course, we've done is we're revising XO and 12 to 43. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So okay. what we're doing there, we're slightly compromising in the sense that um, we're going to 43, but 43 is the Barbados standard. So there's a legitimacy there, but we don't necessarily obviously want to change the prices yeah. so dramatically from, from 40 to 48. But um, so XO and 12 will be 43. And... So the 14 year was a way of, um, uh, you know, uh, not just going up by two more years, uh, but increasing the proof and 
really making a filling that breaching that gap a little bit um between you know the cash strengths and the Doherty's range and really put in a permanent item uh in the Doherty's range that that can easily compete with any of the with any of the ecs cool. um and i've got I mean, you know as they say a lot of people uh, and so what's happening is i've got a lot of people surprised at the, the Doherty's 14 because they didn't they didn't expect it to be um the level that it was and a lot of that is is shaking off the 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 you know doing that lower proof and also to be honest the finite quantity because it's more expensive so you know we you know it'll, it, it, as you the, you know the reason why you do things like these yes is you, you start to sh shake off more of your commercial constraints you know if you're oh, making yeah, a, yeah. a, a you're making a product that you you want to grow the sales of you know it's a Doherty's fire or mainstream product well you're you have some constraints if you're doing something like Doherty's 14 and you're quite satisfied well look I'm only going to bottle a certain amount of those every year you then it then sh you then shake off some commercial shackles so it, you yeah. know it allows it allows the product to shine, to shine well, one out. of the, one of the good things about the only the Doherty's four and the Heretas 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 Heretic what do we call it what do you call it Dawn Heretas yeah, Dawn's got it, like, because she's a master of wine, she knows all But just it. to be clear, <laughs> Dorley's 14 is like Dorley's 12, and it's yeah. a blend of rums that are either age 100% in bourbon cast or 100% yeah. in Madeira cast. Okay, okay. Um, the great thing about uh, rums like these, they are great weapons, especially for me as an independent ambassador. It's a great weapon to actually go to the whiskey drinkers, the Scotch drinkers, the bourbon drinkers, the Irish whiskey drinkers, the Canadian, even the Canadians, they get into, in, into the act. Um, the Canadian whiskey drinkers, it's, it's, it's a nice weapon to go to them and say, listen, this is what rum is. Uh, your perception of what rum was is back there. This is where it is in the future. This is quality rum. It also means that when I'm knows in some of their whiskies, the first thing I say is, wow, this whiskey smells and tastes like a really good rum because of rums like this. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of co uh, commonality between the flavor profiles and the, and the, uh, um, uh, the, the way that you want to feel when you drink a quality spirit. And that's always been reserved for whiskies of the world and, and brandies of the world. Why can't it be for rums? I'm so happy that rums like this exist now um, because, hey, the best beer in the world is rum, but I'm biased. So, um, but that's just me. And I know Dawn loves her rums as well. But we've got, we still have a little bit of time. What's cool to go with a question? Because I know there's some questions. Billy, were there any more questions out there that people have brought in? Any, anyone that's actually inside our room with us? Because we've got a few people that are inside the room that bought the little tasting packs and uh, they wanted to be as close as they could to uh, Mr. Seal. Uh, and Dawn, of course, not me. No, <laughs> Uh, there's people well, on Facebook as well asking questions, but yeah, Billy, if there's anybody that? in the uh, in the Zoom room who would like to oh, ask a Zoom question, yeah, hit the yeah, raising yeah. hand button or just wave at yeah, me. No, I saw I'll, I saw uh, Mr. Watson there. I saw him. There's Mr. Watt. There he is. He's oh, waiting Mr. for Watt. people. Sorry, I just added a son on his, his name, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, anyway. I know you must have a question. <laughs> Mark, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, give me he, a second. He's Mark. on YouTube. Oh, where, <laughs> I'm just trying to find. There he is. Mark. There he is. If you hit a button, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Yeah, just click on, there you go, he's unmuted. How are we doing? Good, hey, man, how are you doing? Mark, why is there no Jamaica flag behind you? What's going on? This is the European section of oh, shit. Okay. my all garden. Right. That's fair <laughs> enough, all right, all right, I'll let you off. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was India there, but no, it's Ireland behind you, it's all right. Yeah, it's all good, all good. Uh, excellent, excellent run through there. Um, can't really think of any questions. That... You can't, well get off then. <laughs> Um, Bill, I, I sure. Bring Pauline and Kwame. They're a cute um, couple. <laughs> oh dear. Um, if you've got a question, just give me a quick wave. Um, I've got one off of the uh, off the Facebook, which yeah, is: if somebody likes Diplomatico and Zacapa style rums, hmm. what element of the four square range do you reckon they should go for? Before Before Richard answers that question, first of all, which Diplomatico are we talking about? Which Zacapa? Because just Diplomatico and Zacapa is all they've oh, said. We'd be a bit more if, if we, we've got a couple of uh, suggestions on Facebook already, so I'd like to see what you guys say as well, see if you line up with what we reckon <laughs> already. <laughs> but, well, I can say, Rich, they're probably not talking about Diplomatico number one, two, and three, because they're 47% and no sugar added and three different types of distillate. So they probably mean Reserve Risk Conceiver. But over to you. <laughs> um, well, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't really... You know, when people come to us at the shows and stuff, and they try the rums, we don't really 
talk about a lot about what they currently drink or 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 like trying to match what they what you know the whole idea is is different rums different styles um so we don't i don't really i never really think about that i never really think oh well if you drink this one you should try try this one yeah i think yeah. if anything we tend to think that more of of, of whiskey actually we tend to think <laughs> in other words we, we tend to think you do not drink rum well come over here we have something for you we are going to make you a rum drinker um so to be honest with you, I really don't never really given that much thought. I, I actually more pass that one to Ian because he's the one more sitting in front of people drinking a wide range yeah. of drinks. But I can honestly say that you know if I'm on a rum show or something, I don't sort of say, well, "What rum do you like?" I, I mm. uh, yeah, because I suppose it boils down to what they like about a particular rum. Um, I just looked on on the Facebook and they were talking about the exclusiva. Now we know with diplomatic exclusiva, yes, it's been sweetened. Um, and it has been sweetened with the age syrup that they add into their product. But if we talk about what I like to say with Barbados rums, especially four square rums, Barbados rums are sweet, but not sweetened. Yeah. Two different things, massive things. So I get a lot of sweetness from, um, from Barbados rums. Well, let me rephrase that. I get a lot of sweetness from four square rums, a touch from Mount Gay, uh, but definitely a lot more sweetness from um, four square rums. But that is, for me, that is natural. Yes, and, and we, we consider things. sweet to be a very desirable uh, quality. Right, um, right, right. So, you know, we deliberately try, in, in, and especially in the blending of the different casts, right, to, to, mm. to get a very balanced and... Uh, and you know and sweet rum but we're talking you know sweetness that's kind of on the front and the middle on the, um, yeah, that's right. on the front and middle. you know yeah. the yeah. real intrinsic sweetness the kind of the real mental trick sweetness and yeah. and that's one of the reasons why we think adding sugar to rum is such a crime because um rum has the ability to give you a lot of inherent sweetness and the minute you add a you know a gram of sugar you destroy the natural sweetness it's it's just as stupid as adding again also vanilla to 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 spice rum. I mean, if you age rum, but well, most of the spice rums are not aged, so they you know they put bucket loads of vanilla. But I mean, four square spice rum has no vanilla in it. Why would it have vanilla in it? We age it in a, in bourbon cask. Um, if I put vanilla in it, I destroy your ability to discern the the vanilla from aging. Um, yeah, I mean, so so. You know, you know, I think everyone knows where we stand on the sugar, but yes, in other words, the, the thing is, the important thing I think to grasp when we speak about the, 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 the sugar is that, yeah, we do love sweet rums. Um, and we do try to make the distillates very sweet. I mean, if I, if I tasted you on some of our fresh distillates, I think you'd be, um, Amazing. You know, people would be stunned at yep, how sweet yep. they are. I um, very true. If I but, can actually step in and maybe answer that question just because purely I was doing it over Christmas. I had four rums in front of me and I had Diplomatic Reserve Exclusiva, I had Dorney's XO, um, and I had two others which I can't remember. And actually my conversion into say maybe away from things like Diplo into say more rums that like Richard's was actually that XO because that had that really lovely roundness and that textural quality and that lovely natural sweetness. So mm. for me, if we're answering that question, it would be Dorani's XO. And that's a master of wine there. Listen. Right. So that's good. And and but I, I just say I just wanted to make the point that we don't we don't see sweetness as as, as bad. We we see sweetness as excellent, but we want we don't you know, we want you to do it the, the, the hard earned way. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, just in case someone thought, you know, or or misunderstood that, you know, when 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 we frowned on sweetened rums, we were not frowning in on sweetness. Good. One, uh, one little technical question for some of the geeks that are out there. There are some geeks watching, there's some regular consumers. The whole thing with pot still and column still, some people have heard that if you have a column still, you make a run from column still, it's either inferior or it's naturally automatically going to be just like vodka. Is this true? Because I know you have a column still. No. Um, there's a lot of misunderstandings on column stills. You think about column stills, I am... Um, Unlike pot stills, you can have a much, <laughs> it's going to actually, let me explain this. If I have a pot still, yeah. or a, a, I can make, I can probably have more control 
over the variety of spirit from that single still. Right, okay, okay. Column stills make a more narrower range of spirits. Okay. Mm. Uh, but the range of designs of mm. column still is vastly, right, yeah, vastly. Yeah. So you can have a column still like what they use in Arminac. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The real true single column. Mm -hmm. Or you can have the column still like what they use in American whiskey and mm -hmm. um, the Creole still of... Oh, the Creole still of French uh, Caribbean, yeah. Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are single physical column. They're actually two column. The second column sits on the top. Yeah. All three of those are what we would call low rectification column stills. Mm -hmm. And they make heavy, full-bodied spirits heavier right. okay. Okay. than is what is made out of a pot still. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yes. In other words, if you looked at the congener count of an American whiskey mm. and compared it with the congener count of you know, an average single malt, the congener count on the uh american whiskey's heart yeah yeah um yeah. and you would see and again you would see if you looked at the congener count on you know an agricole versus the congener count on a um pot still rum not the mm -hmm. highester uh, mm -hmm. ones you will see higher on the agricole right okay. so okay. you know the first sort of myth is to understand that column stills can make um, very, very, very heavy spirits. Right. Okay. Well, that makes uh, that clear, clears up. So that's one manifestation. The other manifestation of column sills that is common, of course, is what's employed in spirit making, which will be the twin column coffee still or or its derivatives. Mm -hmm. um, and there are other designs like Saval, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. But they're yeah. they are on the principle of they're sort of analogous to the same double distillation, the two columns, but they operate at higher rectification. Right, okay. So okay. they make a light but flavorful spirit. So mm. those spirits are significantly lighter than the single column spirits, and mm. they are lighter than the typical pastel spirits. Right, okay, okay. And then you might say you might have another class of column stills, which are the ones that bang out basically pure ethanol. Mm. And they are a very, very, very different beast. Yeah, okay. So that column still in Armagnac or that mm. column still in Martinique mm. or that column still at Foursquare or that column still at Manigay. They are a very, right, okay. very different beast. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. As I say, but within each beast, mm. they are a very narrow range what they can do. So if you have, I can tell you a story, a, a funny story with a company, a new, new company that was put in a, put in a column still. Mm. And they had a Spanish firm built the column still. And the column still, of course, in Spanish style, built basically a neutral spirit plant. Right, yeah. Uh, it was three columns. You only mm. need three columns for a neutral spirit plant. Those multi-column plants, they're all recovery columns, et cetera. I mean, no one's yeah, yeah. technical. So this plant came off and the spirit comes off at 96 and they thought well i'll just take it a tray or two below so they got the design with a couple of different nozzles on oh no and they thought well yeah i'll come over 96 but i'll just take a tray down here and i'll get rum or I'll take another i'll get more from so when they set it up and they started running the neutral spirit came off at the sort of designated tray and they took the next tray oh 96 the next tray, <laughs> oh 96. Um, yeah, the beast was not designed to make rum. It was right, designed yeah, to make alcohol. Yeah. And of course, famously, what you know, we've seen some articles recently, what, what some of the, the, these producers that do that have these big multi columns is, is that hmm. they will then also take a spirit from the first column. So yeah. you might say, yes. so they might say to you, oh, well, my, my column still is flexible. Well, hmm. realistically, what they're doing is they have two stills in one. So they take some spirit from the first column. Yeah. And then, yeah. of course, that's, as I said, outrageously heavy. Yeah. And then they take the spirit from the end of the plant, which is and now them together. light. Um, yeah. But that should never be confused with 
the lovely, you know, Creole column stills or the Armanac stills or the American whiskey stills or the lovely twin column coffee stills of a yeah, different era of Scotch yeah. whiskey. Yeah. Are there any lovely twin column coffee stills left in Scotch That's a good whiskey? question. That would be a question for Billy. Billy, any, any twin, any other patent stills left in, uh, in Scotland? You know, genuine, I, I, flavorful, beautiful stills. I don't know if they're necessarily beautiful, but I, I think there's <laughs> maybe one left. Uh, I think German Ooh, have got something which is a, a vaguely modern version, but that's about Ooh, it. And, and, and that actually brings me to one point in Rome, because when, mm. when, when Luca came to me those years ago about developing you know, sing, pure single rum as the mm. kind of the analog to single malt. He also wanted to, as you know, develop the single blended rum. Single which blended rums, yeah. The, which is what all these the rums one are. One set of bottles with the pure single and the, the, the black bottles with, with the blended. Yeah. And one of the reasons why, he, he, one of the things that, that has, rum has kind of gone its different way to Scotch whiskey, I think, is that we all have our unique columns. Right, okay. So okay. we, are doing a far better job of getting flavorful artisanal spirits out of our mm. column stills than I mm. think Scotch whiskey is. I think <gasps> green whiskey has gone too generic and that has harmed the blended whiskey category. Whereas when you go to rum, you go to Appleton, they have their own column still. You go to Mount Gay, they have their own column still. Well, yep. More than one. It. You go to, 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 to the Foursquare, we have our own column still. You know, my design is different to the Matt Gay design, is different to the yeah. Appleton design. You go to St. Lucia, they got their St. own Lucia. column still. Yeah. So all of the blended rum producers, we all have unique column stills, and they're far closer to the original classic twin column spirit design. Wow. So, I mean, in the Caribbean, we can teach the Scots really how to blend. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> we could give them elements in the blend that they would be giddy over. Oh, cheers. By the way, I, I probably get banned now from going to anywhere in Scotland now to any distillery. <laughs> I suppose I'm going to see Dennis Malcolm because he's got some 50-year-old uh, uh, Glenn Grants in me. Because But well, he did slap me once because he, he gave well, me a uh, Even, uh, <laughs> even um, the Renegade, for example, the new... Oh, yes, from Grenada. Again, from Grenada. They, they decided to build both and they have their own little unique design of column still. Right, okay, okay. Okay, excellent, excellent. Any more, any, any more questions that we have? Uh, yeah, Ian, I've got, yes. um, Mr. Watt has come up with something to say. So, oh, um, finally, Mark, <laughs> finally. <laughs> so, Mark, what do, you, what do you want to ask? Well, uh, first of all, I probably would agree on the column still thing that you were saying. Um, and I love grain whiskey, uh, Scotch grain whiskey, but personally, I think it needs a good amount of age before the diversification uh, comes through, but that's the same point. The other thing was, since you've obviously been bashing Scotch whiskey a little bit, uh, <laughs> along with joking, um, like you've worked with Veritas uh, on with various people. Uh, um, what's your thoughts on like hybrid blends of maybe blending some rum with some Scotch, or you know, like um, like John Glazer does with the Calvados and Scotch mm -hmm. whiskey? Um, what's, what's any thoughts on that? Oh, or would that just horrific. be, not that I'm wanting to do it. Uh, that's for, that's not for me. That's for, that's the, that's for the guys behind the bar. That's for those guys to figure out. Yeah. I'm not coming out with, you know, no. Well, there me, a, few, a few years ago, two, I did, I did launch two, a rum flavored vodka. I did remember, I think it was, yeah, uh, yeah, I did a oh, rum flavored that's, vodka. That's just, I did. No, that, that's just, I mean, you have two, two different cultures, two different. I, I did once uh, have the pleasure of uh, putting uh, a cask of Foursquare into an ex uh, slightly peated whiskey cask for okay. uh, a few months. Well, two years. <laughs> uh, and it worked. It worked really well. Um, but um, it's, no, but you're, it's you're talking about, that, about, oh, but you're not talking about mixing the rum and the whiskey. You were talking about putting rum in a whiskey cask. No, that was just, but I was just thinking that worked quite well. And, you know. I oh, yes. Yeah. Um, nothing wrong with that. As I say, the, the, the cultures of, of, of whiskey and the culture of rum are refill cask. It's part of our yeah. culture. I mean, it, for me, I, I mean, just to show you, sometimes when I go over to the U.S. and I'm selling the ECS in the U.S., I'll get a, you know, staunch ECS fan will say to me, you know, I love the vintages, but I, I'm not interested in those wine finishes ones. And of course, they're not wine finishes. 
Yeah. But, but the point would be is in, in, in that American bourbon culture, the concept of refilling a cask is foreign to them. Mm. And that's mm. fine. That's their culture. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't argue with them, I, you know. Um, and I think, but the, the flip side is also needs to be appreciated. When, you know, when Scotch whiskey uh, guys put, put whiskey in a, in, a, in, a, in a sherry cask, that's the culture of whiskey yeah. makers. Yeah. Um, Personally, so, I prefer I, I, refill casks can, anyway. In other words, so when you put rum in a, in a peated whiskey cask, it's, it's not jarring to, to a rum person. Um, yeah. I mean, I tried the Mount Gay peated whiskey cast and I thought it was great. Um, no. I've, not tried, I've not tried that one, so I can't comment. <laughs> yeah, but in other words, what I'm, 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 again, you, 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 it must never lose sight. In other words, if you, if you put something in a different cask and it doesn't taste like a rum anymore, it doesn't taste like a Barbados rum anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's I, wrong. Yeah. I think that's true for everything, though. You, you need to taste the yes, distillery exactly. character. Yes, exactly. No, I agree. You, you need to have your... your and I, th I think that's one of the things that was sort of missed in the Scotch Whiskey Association relaxing of the rules and cast. They still had that, that, that one line, it must retain the organoleptic qualities of Scotch Whiskey. Um, of course, some people may bend that, but I, I think that line yeah. is more important than than, than we than yeah. people appreciate. Gareth, you but got yes, a question as well. In other words, yeah. to my mind, uh, refill casts um, what it is uh, are fine. But again, it's also to I think to about quality of cast. So you know, a peated cast might appeal to me because it was a good quality cast or a good quality spirit. Um, but you know, there's no way in hell I'm putting rum in a tequila cast. It's, it's such Why would a you want to do that? Culture. Why would you it's, want to put rum in a tequila glass? It's also a cast that, like tequila, don't buy new casts. And it's, they're not famous for their. It, there's nothing famous about a tequila cast. The only famous thing with tequila cast is the tequila in it, not the cast. So you know, when you go and buy, you know, when I go and I buy a refill cognac cast, it's because I'm buying an excellent very originally very expensive cask or as they say when you go and buy a peated whiskey cask or something you hopefully there's more to it than just in other words this the, the, the cask itself is a good quality cask um so i i when i say i'm you know all for refill i doesn't mean i'd use anything um it's got to be from a you know it's got to be that same original desirability you know why did why did they refill the sherry cask because sherry was revered and the cask was great. I mean, it was only a shipping cask, but you know, in other words, no one considered that the sherry spoiled their whiskey. And you know, why did we all those years ago use all the refill casks? Because what, you know, everything that we were importing was, you know, was the good stuff. You know, we were importing Madeiras and sherries and brandies. So of course we refilled those casks. We're importing sherry casks then. Hmm? They're not, now they're not sherry casks. Well, but they never really were sherry casks. They were mostly shipping casks. I mean, the yeah, that's, a, that's a debate for another day. That's, that's a, a very, very long debate. <laughs> but the good, the, good thing about, the good thing about the sherry cask that came to the Caribbean is that at least they spent quite a bit of time in the cask. <laughs> um, so Gareth, Gareth wanted to ask, um, how come in rum, the, sorry, in the rum world, producers blend rums from different countries, but in whiskey, this is less common or not done? Um, well, that, I, I think it's a simple function of the fact that um, appreciate that once upon a time, Guyana, uh, Jamaica, Barbados were all effectively, from an economic point of view, the same country. Yeah, yeah. British colony. So, yeah. so we shipped. Uh, a good illustration of this, remember the classification of um, Jamaica rum by H.H. H. Cousins, um, home yeah. trade meant England. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, 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 there was local home and export, and export meant the continent. Yeah. Um, so you had a scenario where, um, you know, from the point of view of the English buyer, um, Barbados, Guyana, and, and Jamaica were like, you know, three regions of Scotland. Mm. Yes, correct, correct, yeah. And, uh, and, and can you imagine, Gareth, like 
like a Scotch company just saying, yeah, let's get a bit of Irish whiskey and uh, blend that with uh, our product. You see that happening? That does not happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's why up until the, you know, the modern era, the, the, the blends were always the, the, the English country blends. So I mean, even to this day, you, you don't see many blends breaking out of that. Yeah, you yeah. might you get the odd the odd one saying, well, we used a bit of you know dumb ref or something, but you know generally speaking, you know mm -hmm. all those, you know, it's the same sort of usual suspects: Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad, in the, in the multicolored prints, and that's because of the the, the heritage. Mm -hmm. Should we take the last run, Ian? Yeah, yeah, the last run. I thought we'd have the last run. I actually I've actually drunk half my bottle already. Um, but we're going back to it. The oh. heritas, hereditas. Heretic. Say it again, Dawn. There you go. <laughs> I can never say it. The only one I can say is... No, I don't even try to tell you one. Quick, lastly, to this <laughs> 14 year old. In fact, Dawn, this is one of your babies, isn't it? This is Whiskey Exchange. You this tell us about this product. Why, why did you go... Why did a company like yours go to Richard and say to Richard, we want you to make some exclusive runs for us, for our clientele. We're the biggest sellers of alcohol in the UK, one of the biggest sellers in the world. Why did you go to Foursquare? I know Foursquare is one multiple awards especially since 2016 they've won every single international award out there but why did you go to them to get a run um, like this i think sakin and i i mean I, i've been a massive fan of richard's rums for a hell of a long time i remember first meeting him in selfridges and i remember telling um was you shopping or was he shopping no he was he was doing a tasting for us and i remember oh. some, uh, bruce who okay. supports um Richard's rum said to me, now, Richard, you know, you know he, he takes time to get, I said, he'll be hugging me by the end of the day. <laughs> nice, nice. Because last time I was in selfish, I got thrown out. But anyway, carry on. That's because I wasn't there yet. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I have, I've, I have a huge respect for Richard's rums for a long time. And then when I joined uh, Whiskey Exchange, me and Sakinda were like, we have to get Richard to do a rum for us. Mm. Um, especially because we're seeing all these amazing rums that Luca was getting. And we were like, we need, we need a piece of that action. So we talked to Richard last year. We, we did the first, no. No, oh, Criterion years. was the first. A few years ago, we did the first one. Uh, Criterion. What was the first one? Criterion. Criterion. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so Criterion wasn't, was a UK exclusive. Yeah. Right, and okay. then we jumped with her at a task to be a, a global exclusive. A global exclusive. Okay, cool. Um, so, you know, well, we, we just, and we're currently working on the third. Ooh. Um, yes. Ooh, got, really? I've got, two, I've got samples on my desk. <laughs> what? We should have been in a little waiting. pack. I'm waiting for Sekinda to come back in so we can taste. Um, Where is Sekinda? He must be locked down somewhere. You, yeah, you'll never know. Down, <laughs> shut him away. Um, but yeah, so you know, for us, it was a real kind of something that we really want to do. And also, I think the real point for us is that uh, Richard's rums very much appeal you know, to, we have a big brown spirit consumer. Um, yeah, especially yeah. With, and we really felt, especially in the four square range, Mm. that they're very whiskey led i mean that's why we brought rum into whiskey show um because we okay. really feel there's a, a place for rum with the whiskey yeah. and that for us is why hereditas actually works really well for us for the for the whiskey drinker because of that big sort of sherry influence and i'll, I'll let richard talk a little bit more about what hereditas is about wow okay excellent well it makes it makes yeah i I'll also mentioned and i think ian you would know this very well is um so Kinder, i think has been at every single rum show Yes, he has. Rum shows from and I'd just like to point out when it comes to Sakinda, he's just popped up on the Facebook chat to say hello, he's he? here. So we're allowed to curse him out. Yeah, so yeah, we, we now have to all, everybody be good. Okay, <laughs> hi boss. So, well, too bad that he's turned up now because I'm about to give him some credit. Um, oh man, no. Yeah, in other words, a lot of people don't realize that Sakinda was there from the very earliest rum fest. Yeah, they can do, in fact, in fact, in a story, on my way to the whiskey, there's a whiskey show, I think it's called Whiskey Live, on my way to Whiskey Live in 2006, when I was doing the final research for creating um, the Rum Fest, I met this young lady at the at Victoria Station. She was really loud and brash, I know she was, but she walked with me to the actual, um, to the event, and it was Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> she was, and we walked in together, and that's also where I first met um, Secunda, and he gave me some advice about what to do for if you're going to create a rum fest because they'd never been done, that no one had ever even created a rum fest before. So, um, he said, Yeah, do this, do that, and do this. And I was like, Oh, that sounds good, yeah. And then I said, yeah, Well, you're if, if I do a rum fest, you're going to sell my rum at my show, gentlemen's agreement. Anyway, Karen Rich, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I know. And then, <laughs> so yeah, again, you know, so people don't realize that he's been sort of had his eyes on rum from from the beginning, and you know, mm -hmm. every rum pass he'd come over to my stand, and we, we, we would we would taste the rums. Um, so horrendous ass, fourteen year old rum. Um, it's a blend of rums that were either fourteen years in uh, bourbon or double matured bourbon and sherry, ten plus four. Sorry, what do you mean by double matured? Not finished? So it's 10 years in ex bourbon and then four years in ex sherry. Ooh, that's a finish, isn't it? No. That's a good question. <laughs> finish is probably shorter. Finishing would be finishing it. Short. It's one of those things, uh, you know, when do you become an adult versus a child, you know? Ooh. Ooh. I'm still I would, a child. I know I'm still a child. <laughs> So yes, no, we think that that done 10 plus 4 is a double maturation. So it's a blend of single and double matured right. rums. Try writing that on the label um, <laughs> and not confusing people. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, and it come, as I say, we did. And one of the fun things we did was, was to do a 14 double matured uh, um, same pedigree with Patrimonio and Hereditas, nice. two names nice. meaning in inheritance. And of course, you know, my son was like, you're crazy. You can't do two of the same for Luca and Skinda. And I said, they're not the same. Uh, and the whole idea is it's too easy. And we still get this up to this day. People read a ped pedigree. Mm. This is a 10 year old run, you know, aged in sherry cast or whatever. And then suddenly decide in their mind that all 10 year old rums age in cherry cask must taste the same. I know, that's so true. They do get the, I hear that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I like sometimes to be deliberately provocative. And no. so my, I love that people would grab the two of them and then go, hang on a minute. They're different. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. And, you know, and that's a lot about when we do the Valier series mm. and now the TWE series. It is about showing off the differences mm. Mm. Um, that we can do. It's about saying, well, here's one distillery, as they say, keep into this common heritage, but we're going to have give you a wild ride of differences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, well, just to be clear, we had three rums. Uh, Empery was also sherry cast. And, mm -hmm. you, know, they were, you know, Christian said to me, how can you have three rums? I said, they're different. I promise <laughs> you, they're different. Um, and, that, and that's, you know, the fun of it, you know. And, and with, like with, the, with what we've done now with the, 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 this year, for example, uh, in the ECS, nobility is followed you know dominus and and and, and criterion and all those mm -hmm. guys but all of those guys use different casts whereas nobility is only bourbon and all the valiers have been different casts and they're in sherry and etc and plimpidensario is only bourbon so i'm gonna have fun this year with you know showing that one we can do the highest level rums with just with bourbon casts and you know so so sort of taking out any kind of um thought of a, a, a you know gimmick uh, gimmickness but also to show that we can now make rum something completely different from the previous series and then you know if people put them side by side um they're going to see a difference between ability and and, and plenty potential and so last year we we had great fun with people you know putting hereditas and and patrimonio and and so and you know people having very clear preferences for one or the other, which is also very important. Um, one of the things that I love to see is people falling on very much on different sides. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, everyone had come out and said, you know, let's say, let's say 80% of the people had said, well, I preferred patrimonio, then I would be yeah. disappointed because yeah. then that yeah. would make yeah. me feel well, one was better than the other. Right. But when it's more even, then it's much more about personal taste. And, and, and so that's the fun, you know, that's the fun side for me to, to do that. So doing Hereditas and, and, and Patrimonia Entry, the fun was not just doing those rums in their own individual, um, mm -hmm. but to show that you could take bourbon cast and cherry cast 
and make very, very different rums that would appeal to different people. And, and Don's right. I would say that the whiskey guys tended to go for Hereditas. Mm. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Over Patrimonio. Okay. Um, not all exclusively, but, you know, again, that's what I'm saying. If one had done it, but um, Hereditas definitely um, pushed some buttons of the whiskey guys. Definitely. So, so um, I mean, I'm wrapping up now and that type of thing. So the last question I want to ask was, what's the future? What, is there any like exclusive products that are on the horizon? Are there new types of cask you may be using? Is like the Whiskey Exchange got another exclusive? Um, when are you gonna launch the Plenty Potentia or Rio um, Dawn? <laughs> um, um, I'll answer those. So just so everyone's aware, um, Nobilary should launch in about two, three weeks. Okay, cool. Uh, scenario, I would say probably more into June. Um, June. We will have both, absolutely, because I know we've had a lot of questions about both of them over the last couple of weeks from different customers. Yeah. Um, I've just caught up about Plenty Potenciario, which was the one I wasn't 100% sure when we were going to launch. And, and, and the Plenty Potenciario was going to be, it's going to be limited to what, one, two bottles per person? About one per person, I would say. No ballerina, no limit. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, that, that sometimes we didn't cover. Some people ask, you know, what's the difference between the Velia series and the ECS series? And it's generally basically size. So the ECS series you sell in America and Europe, the Velia series is smaller. And, that, and that's mm -hmm. the basic reason why it's more expensive. Um, Plenty Potenciario is actually cheaper than uh, Patrimonio. Why? Because Patrimonio was 14 years old and sherry casks. Mm -hmm. And sherry casks mm -hmm. are expensive. Yeah. Plenty Potenciario is 12 years old and bourbon casks. So it's a little cheaper. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean it's inferior. It just means it's a little cheaper. Um, but they are more expensive than the ECS because yes. the ECS is bigger in volume. Again, okay. it doesn't, has nothing to do with the quality. I know lots of people who swore to me that they preferred 2007 over yeah. you know yeah. every other release. Mm. Uh, it's just quantity. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if in 2007 I made more rum of the rum that went in 2007, that's great for everyone because it means mm. it was cheaper than the stuff that was you know parceled off into the sherry cast yeah, um, yeah. you know I, I mentioned the other day for example i took a picture where i bought some genuine port cast and as you say we were not we're not getting into debate about <laughs> cast and genuine sherry and non-genuine but i did buy some very very genuine very very old port cast and they cost mm. me a fortune and i literally said well that will most likely be a value release one day Right. Okay. Why? Lucky because Luca. Because it's a small quantity and very, very expensive cash. Which um, cash are you saving for me, Richard? You know the one I want. Yes. 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 You can so, get the, uh, right. and to your point about what's coming, <laughs> there's always stuff coming because you know there's stuff I put down ten years ago, twelve years ago that's now you know it's now turning ten and twelve. I'm it's coming. Well, like everyone to tends to get everyone tends to get excited about the pictures I put today, but they have no idea the stuff that was before Facebook now <laughs> is now coming. Yeah, that is now coming. Or he was taking uh, photos. Well, I've got pictures of me sleeping on all those barrels, so I know what's there. <laughs> I'm still waiting for Richard to allow me to come to Barbados. No, no, you're banned. You're banned. You're banned. And, and the other day I tasted. Um, I did a post. You know the. So when, when Luke and I got together, we, you know, he wanted to create the pure pot still series, you know, the habitation value series, pure single rum. And, you know, I didn't really put down a lot of hundred percent pot still rum. Uh, Cause we have a, you know, we do blends and, but he did get me to release that famous one for square 2013. Yes. The pot still. Which, yeah. Of course, so mm -hmm. it was just short of three years when we released it. And of course that, that did get us a lot of, you know, tremendous amount of attention um because um you know that was it was not a rum we'd released before a style of rum you know it was a, a young pure pot still aged in old cognac cast so i taste that was 2013 so i i just tasted it where it is now turned seven years old Ooh. and you know one of the things i was able to do there that that you know was not as easy to do it's not always as easy to do you can do it i mean obviously we we, we keep samples and when stuff goes in a cask and stuff like that but when we took a product that was exclusively from that batch 
sold it. So we have, you know, commercial bottles. And then I could take a sample and do a side by side of it at two years versus seven years, which would be something that's more of a headache to go and do out of go and dig in the archives and pull samples. It was nice to see it was well, not nice, it was extraordinary. I was actually very surprised. Because there's a little bit from my side, it's a little bit like you taste things as they go along and you, you don't, it's just like when, when you see someone you haven't seen in years versus if you see them every day, you don't notice the changes. Hmm. So as I say, when I tasted that 2013, it was kind of a unique experience wow. Wow. to taste something five years apart um, without, you know, without having to go and dig in the, you know, our files away of all our sample bottles. And the rum is completely different. <laughs> I mean, it is. It, I I was blown away myself. Wow, wow, that's a serious. Well, that I mean, <clears throat> I mean, it makes me happy. I'm sure it makes Dawn happy. It makes all the Foursquare. Uh, but it's still only seven years old, so it's not it's not coming out again in any hurry. Uh, but, seven seven years tropically aged, so that's a little that's bit more mature than some be, of the other stuff out there. That's going to be a huge, huge run. Yeah, something for us to look forward to. But yeah. um, Mr. Seal. I would like to say thank you for, uh, again, giving up your time. Actually, we went on a few minutes over time, but hey, still had lots of rum lovers. We still had more people watching than the other show yesterday. Didn't we, Dawn? <laughs> ah, anyway, uh, yes, Emily. Emily is very happy because she used to work for another company. And they just, they got about 90 people watching the show yesterday and we doubled that easily. So, <laughs> so Emily's happy. Emily's break the whole show. I'm allowed to say, oh, sorry, it's too late. No one's going to watch this anyway on a replay. So uh, thanks, Richard, thanks again. Uh, for uh, uh, for sharing your knowledge, it's always a pleasure to listen to you. And just a shame that I can't be sitting down with you having a rum and you smoking cigar, and uh, and I'm taking in some of that Barbados vibe. But that's you something can join to look us on to. Zoom drinking on Saturday. Who? What's happening on Saturday? What's happening on Saturday? Uh, I'm sure I'll Zoom Richard on Saturday, and he'll be. Smoking. Oh yeah, you probably will. As long as it's not two o'clock in the morning UK time, British Standard Time, because that's when you get really really crazy. Um, I would like to thank all the guys that uh, joined us in the Zoom room, the Paulina and Kwame and Gareth and Crow and uh, Billy, you, you were working anyway, and all the other guys that were here. Uh, so I know the people on Facebook land. Um, yeah, thank you for joining in and sending your questions. This video will still be up, so you can watch it again. And you can have a laugh at me, um, getting drunk, drinking all these samples. I've done, I've done half the bottles. There's a lot of rum inside here, you know, these sample bottles. It's, it's like, it's, there's loads. <laughs> loads of rum, and I'm half drunk, half of it. But I'm happy, I'm happy. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing this again, me, Dawn, and some other guests. I think we've got Zan coming in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, Auntie Joy is just contacted me and said she wants to get involved. So uh, we should do this, but we have to get Richard back again and do six other rums. Right, well, yeah. I'm sure we'll be, um, we'll be making an appearance at Whiskey Show. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll be at the Whiskey When's the Whiskey Show? When's the Whiskey Show? The Whiskey Show will be um, co uh, coronavirus uh, willing. Yeah, um, it will be the first weekend of October. First weekend of October, uh, sure. Brilliant. That's about three weeks before. So that'll be exciting. Excellent. So you're going to warm up London before the Rum Fest, which will be, uh, the, that's it, 16th, 17th, and 18th of October. I see Kwame on his head. He's like, yeah, man, Rum Fest. Yeah, yeah. Rum Fest, London Rum Week. We'll all be there. But again, thank you, uh, Internet World. And thank you to, uh, big thanks to um, um, COVID 19, because this probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for, for you, Mr. Virus. So, I think uh, I would trade. I think I would trade getting rid of uh, this. Uh, <laughs> for sitting with us, yes. I yes. Was, uh, yeah, I think we could sacrifice this event for. Uh, you know, <laughs> we probably could because one thing about rum, rum is enjoyed. Time. Yeah, the good thing, rum is actually much more appreciated when you're doing it with friends. So yeah, I, I agree with you, Rich. This it'd be a lot better when we're face to face and in company. But hey, but cheers, thanks, and thank you for Billy, eh? Billy Abbott for controlling yeah. everything. <laughs> And uh, being a technical man, and if you want to uh, learn about whiskey, listen, watch Billy on the, the Whiskey Exchange uh, page. He's there talking about whiskeys, talking about his favorite whiskeys. He's also talking about the best whiskey in the world, which is whiskey aged in rum casks. <laughs> I'm biased, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, thanks, guys, and I'll yeah, see you next time. No, and thank you. Thank you, Richard. You guys are amazing, as always. We love you. <laughs> Um, and so for those who want to join next week, we've got Mitch Wilson from Black Tot doing some blending components. And then the week after, as Ian said, we've got the wonderful Zan from yeah. Worthy Park, who yeah. is an absolute legend. Yeah, and Zan looks like Penfold from um, Danger Mouse, if you want to know what he looks like. Um, but no, thank you very much, guys, and take care. Ciao.